Good morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you on the bright side. We want to be your go-to source for all things health and nutrition. Eight. Uh, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about formulations, ingredients, the longevity products, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we want to hear from you, 844-236-6010. If you have a success story or if you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended, please go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, and you can order products right off the website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com. You can also click on the Join the Team link if you want to start a longevity business and be in business for yourself. Earn thank you checks associated with uh, spreading the word, changing lives at the most basic and fundamental level there is, the level of good health. You can also uh, just get your products at the wholesale price. If you so desire, offer a one-time $25 fee. Click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or call 866-735-2470 for more information. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. Thanks for joining us. We're talking about uh, the liver and glu uh, detoxification, glucoronidation, technically, type of detoxification. Last we spoke, we were talking about kombucha tea, all the rage. It's so important for, well, it's important for a lot of reasons. It's, it's a health drink. It's a health beverage. It's, a, it's like a vitamin water. It, it, you know how they have this stuff called vitamin water out there? It's got a little smattering of vitamins in the water. I'm not exactly sure how they make it. Kombucha tea is like a vitamin water plus. It's got real vitamins, not fake vitamins, but real vitamins made by bacteria. It's got amino acids in it. It's got uh, uh, plant, uh, plant nutrients or phytonutrients, I guess you'd say. Uh, things like polyphenols, which we've talked about in the past. It's got enzymes in it. It's got uh, lactic acid in it. It's got uh, the, the detoxification elements that we talked about are in it. But it, one of the, the most important and interesting aspects of kombucha tea is its fats. It's a source of really cool fats. You wouldn't think that it would be a source of fats. It looks watery. It doesn't taste fatty or look fatty for sure. But it's, got a, it's a source of a really, really interesting type of fat that you don't hear a lot about, a fat that's watery, a water-soluble fat. In chemistry, we usually have a distinction between water-soluble and fat-soluble. Well, there's, there's these special molecules that are water-soluble fats. They're partially water-soluble, partially fat-soluble. In the, in, in the body... There's lots of these water-soluble, fat-soluble kinds of molecules that are both water-soluble and fat-soluble because in biology, sometimes you don't want to be all fatty. Sometimes you don't want to be all watery. Sometimes you've got to kind of have a foot in both worlds, if you're a molecule anyway. So these fat-soluble uh, fat water molecules or water-soluble fat molecules, these watery fat things, have really interesting properties, really, really interesting biological properties. Like amazing biological properties because they can cross cell membranes really effectively. 
They're partially fat and partially watery. When something has a watery and a nature and a fatty nature, it can move around real quick, uh, real efficiently, and it can pass through things real efficiently. If something's watery, it's not going to make it through fats. If something's fatty, it's not going to make it through water. But if something has both, it ha- has a, a, a watery nature and a fatty nature, it can cross through things really, really effectively, and that makes it super powerful and super effective. And makes them also very, very uh, useful, very practical, not just for the body, but also in chemistry, also in uh, skin chemistry, for example. When I'm formulating a skincare product, I love these molecules that have sort of a fatty nature and a watery nature. If you've used our truth treatments, you know that the vitamin C we use is very unique. You, if you've used our truth treatments, you probably know that you, you probably notice that you get really dramatic results and quick results because the vitamin C that we use has its foot in both the watery world and the fatty world. It's a fat sol. That's why I always call it a fat soluble vitamin C. Vitamin C is typically water soluble, and it doesn't penetrate through fat barriers very effectively. The skin being a fat barrier. So if you're using a vitamin C product and it's just water-soluble vitamin C, you're wasting your money pretty much. The fat-soluble vitamin C, which is partially fatty and partially watery, on the other hand, is very expensive stuff. You're not going to see it in a lot of products, but it's really super effective because it can traverse membranes and traverse barriers very effectively. It can traverse the skin barrier, the stratum corneum, the surface of the skin, and it can get into skin cells very effectively. So these water-soluble, fat-soluble molecules that are found in kombucha, likewise, have very interesting properties. They can get through membranes very effectively. They can get through the skin very effectively. They can get through the digestive tract very effectively. I'm talking about these fats. These water-soluble fats, or yeah, well, I guess water-soluble fats. You can say fat-soluble water molecules, any way you want to look at it. But we're talking about fats here. So these water-soluble fats are also very small, and they're we call them short. We call them short-chain fatty acids. That's the technical term for them. You just think of them as short fats. Fats come in three lengths, short, medium, and large. The long ones, the ones are, that's the ones most of us are familiar with, are the long ones. Those are the ones that are found uh, in most food. In, when we eat fatty foods, typically the, our fatty foods are going to have high amounts of these long ones. Dietary fats are mostly long ones. These uh, dietary fats... We, uh, they call them omega. Uh, they come in two varieties that are essential, that are said to be essential. We'll talk about that here in a second. But there's there's lots of different ones: stearic acid, palmitic acid, um, uh, linoleic acid, and linolenic acid. Those are the those are the uh, the omega threes and the omega sixes. They play very functional roles in the body. These long ones. Some of these long ones, these two that we call uh, say to be essential, you can't live without. Now, you can make all the other ones. They're not a big deal. You don't need to get them in your food or anything. You don't even need to worry about them because your body will make them as long as you're healthy. These two special ones, the body can't make, and that makes them super, super important. Omega-6s and omega-3s, they're called. Not all omega-6s and omega-3s are essential, but the ones that are essential happen to be omega-6 and omega-3. I'm not going to get into their names. It's kind of a mouthful. We'll just call them omega-6s and omega-3s. If you have dry skin, if you have female health issues, PMS, if you have brain issues, including depression, anxiety, sore muscles, inflama- uh, infl- inflammatory issues, chances are pretty good you've got an issue with your omega-6s and your omega-3 essential fatty acids. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about these here probably in the next few days. The medium ones, medium chain fatty acids, MCTs. You've probably, more and more you're hearing about MCTs. We learned about them in pharmacy school, but uh, more and more you're hearing about MCTs as being uh, important for health. They are certainly important for health. They're a great source of energy. They're water soluble and fat soluble. That means they go. They don't have to get processed like the long chains. Typically, the long chains, those are the ones where we get most of our energy from. The short chains, they're really interesting because they're, they're somewhat watery. They go right to work. They don't have to get processed. They go right into the circulatory system. Ordinary fats can't go in the circulatory system. They're not watery enough, but these go right into the circulatory system. That means they work fast. That means they're not stored anywhere near as readily. That makes them great for weight loss. All right, we'll continue talking about MCTs and also the super interesting and super fascinating short-chain fatty acids. And let's see, we'll do that when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We will return right after this. Okay, we 
are back on the bright side, 844-236-6010. We got lots of lines open for you, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about skin health or the longevity products or formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard about or read about, if you have a health challenge your loved one needs help with, 844-236-6010 is our number. And if you have a success story you'd like to share or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844 844- 236-6010 is our number on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at benfuchsarchives.com. Also, brightsideben.com. You can purchase your longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our websites as well, or call 866-735-2470 for more information. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, they are all available at truthtreatments.com. Keep checking back on the website. We will have a couple of new products. Well, we'll have a few new products, actually. We'll have two supplements come, one supplement coming out, one new supplement coming out. Our connective tissue repair complex will be out here in a couple of weeks. Great supplement for healing if you're pre-surgery or post-surgery or if you're dealing with wrinkles or any connective tissue health issues. We've talked about connective tissue on this program a lot. I don't hear very many people addressing this very important component of the body, the connective tissue. And in my opinion, connective tissue repair is the number one health strategy for anti-aging, building the connective tissue. Many of the of the uh, signs and the unpleasantries that are associated with, uh, with uh, aging, not to mention the de- degenerative diseases like heart disease and even cancer, are really based in the connective tissue. So if you want to pick one strategy for anti-aging or for maintaining your good, youthful, <clears throat> youthful vigor and health, it's building the connective tissue. And I've been sending people for years to the health food store. I figured out, well, I'm just come up with a supplement that has everything you need to help build connective tissue, including copper and collagen and vitamin C and eggshell membrane and a lot of really neat uh, components of our new connective tissue repair complex, which will be on our website, truthtreatments.com here uh, in a couple of weeks. And then also we have a couple new cleansers, our peppermint salicylic cleanser and honey high hyaluronic acid cleanser are both going to be out in uh, a couple of weeks and they'll be up at truthtreatments.com. So keep checking the website or listening to this program because we'll be talking about that in the coming uh, weeks and months. Okay. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking about kombucha and detoxification and fats. You wouldn't think about kombucha tea as being a source of good fats, but it most certainly is, particularly medium, uh, short chain and medium chain fats. There's not a lot of long chain fats in kombucha, but there are uh, some medium chain fats. The medium chains, as we were saying before we went to break, are very important for energy. Uh, you can get medium chain fats. Well, medium, the best source of medium chain fats is, uh, is uh, coconut oil. That's nature's richest source of, uh, well, it's not really nature's source because coconut oil is processed, and, but nonetheless, coconut oil is a good source of uh, MCTs. In fact, MCT oil, if you go to the health food store and buy MCT oil, the chances are pretty good it's coconut oil. It's a fraction of the coconut oil or a part of the coconut oil. Not a coconut oil is made up of all kinds of different fats, but the uh, MCT portion of it is... Uh, is uh, process is, is filtered out. I guess you'd say it's fractionally fractionated. They could say, but it's filtered out and and turns and, and that's what they use for the liquid. I use MCTs in my skincare products because MCTs are like we were talking earlier because they're somewhat fatty and somewhat watery. They're very effective for transdermal penetration. If you put them in with other active materials, you can improve the penetration of those active materials. I use it in my retinol products. MCTs in retinol help the retinol pass through the stratum corneum and get down to the deeper layers of the skin. So essential fatty acids are long. They're found in lots of different foods. Medium chains are medium. They're not found in very many foods. And, um, then there's the short chains. The short chains are really fascinating. One in particular is is fat, uh, extra fascinating. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. I want to talk ab- uh, about the EFAs now, however. The EFAs are long chains. They're long chain fats. They're said to be essential, and that word is so important in the world of nutrition. If you talk to people who know a little bit about nutrition, they'll tell you that essential means that <clears throat> the body can't make it. But that's not quite telling the story. Essential means just like the word essential means. Essential in nutrition is no different from essential in the English language. It means you better have it. You, yes, it's true. 
your body can't make it. That's very true about all essential nutrients, essential amino acids and essential vitamins in particular. But uh, more fundamentally, it means it's like air. When we say a nutrient is essential, we mean it's like air. Just like you can't live without air, you can't live without essential nutrients. The problem is with air, if you if you don't have any air for three minutes, you're dead. But if you don't have enough essential uh, nutrients, you're not going to die right away. You're just going to suffer from some kind of deficiency issue to the, to the extent or the, the length that you suffer from this deficiency is going to be uh, how bad off you're going to be. Most people aren't 100% deficient in these nutrients. Most people are just 90% or 80% or 70%, but enough that they know that health challenges ensue, but not dramatic enough that you notice it. You may just be tired. You may just have headaches. You may just have high blood pressure. You may just have problems with your sugar. You may just be hungry all the time. It may be, it's not going to be dramatic like you're going to keel over and drop dead, but it's going to be dramatic enough that you're going to have health problems. This is why essential nutrients have to be ingested in generous amounts every day. That's, this is what the mighty 90 essential nutrients are all about. So if you say, well, how am I going to get my essential nutrients every day? How am I going to get enough essential nutrients every day? Well, you call 866-735-2470, order the Healthy Start Pack, or you go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, and order uh, the mighty 90 essential nutrients, which are found in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, the OsteoFX, uh, and then the uh, Ultimate EFAs. EFAs are just as essential as any other essential nutrient. They're just as essential as the essential minerals. They're just as essential as vitamins. They're just as essential as essential amino acids. Thus, the word essential, essential fatty acids. Now, there's two of these things. There's lots of fatty acids, as I was saying before we went to the break, but there's two of these things that are essential. They are must-have. And guess what? Most of us don't get anywhere near the amount of essential fatty acids that we need. And EFA deficiencies are pretty darn common, even though, as I say, we're getting by. But it's, uh, when you understand what these things do, what these essential fatty acids do, you'll see how if you don't have enough of them, there's no way you can be optimally healthy. There's no way, just like vitamins. Think of essential fatty acids as vitamins. They are a type of vitamin, essentially, no pun intended. They're basically a type of vitamin. And deficiencies are, I would venture to say, more common than not. Major changes in our intake of EFAs began in the 1950s and 1960s. Essential fatty acids, there's two of them, and they, they're supposed to be in a certain balance in the body. Omega-6s are more, there's lots more omega-6s in the body than there are omega-3s. Omega-3s are, are kind of, they're basically neuro neurologic. Well, I don't want to say that, but they play a major role in neurology. They do a lot of things, but they play a major role in neurology, in the brain, in vision, and how the body moves, how it locomotes, the, the neuromuscular connection. They're anti-inflammatory in nature. They, uh, as, as opposed to the omega-6s, which are pro-inflammatory in nature. Now, that's not a bad thing. We're conditioned to believe that inflammation is bad, but inflammation is not bad. It's out-of-control inflammation that's the problem. All right, 844 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. Got lots of lines open for you. We'll return with more good health information right after this. Back on the bright side, I am pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number, and got uh, empty board, lots of lines open for you at 844-236-6010 if you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, or the longevity products, or the longevity business, or our Truth Skin Health products, which are all available at truthtreatments.com, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470, if you want to talk to a real, live human being. All right, we'll get your calls. Well, if we have calls, we'll get your calls here momentarily. A couple of interesting stories. This, is, this, made, this made the news big time. It seems like every time there's a, a study that comes out on coffee, it, you, you, can't, you, you can't avoid reading about it. It's on all the various uh, news, orga 
published by all the various news organizations and it's all over the internet and uh, the recent article that came out in the Journal of the American Medical Association Internal Medicine is no different. This is on coffee live helping you live longer. Headline could drinking lots of coffee really help you live longer. Here are the facts. Good news for coffee lovers, including those who indulge heavily. Yet another study has found a link between drinking coffee and a longer life. Quote, this study provides further evidence that coffee drinking can be part of a healthy diet and offers reassurance to coffee drinkers, unquote, wrote the National Cancer Institute researchers who analyzed data for nearly 500,000 people throughout the UK. The study took place over the course of 10 years, and they found that uh, for uh, coffee drinkers, whether they're drinking decaf coffee or instant coffee or ground coffee or whatever kind of coffee they're drinking, they found that even people who drank up to eight cups of coffee a day, it was associated with lower mortality risk uh, compared to non-coffee drinkers. Now, I am a non-coffee drinker. I've never really, I've actually never tasted coffee, believe it or not. I've never had any coffee, not because of, for any health reasons, but I just don't like the taste of coffee. Uh, but as it turns out, there may be some very interesting benefits to drinking coffee and, and not just anecdotally, but just biochemically, not just from, from interviewing people and seeing how long they live, but actually from a, a chemistry standpoint, there's some good stuff in coffee. Coffee has a lot of protein in it. Coffee bean does anyway. And when you put it in water, presumably some of that protein is going to get in the water. Um, it's a good source of uh, B vitamins. It's a very interesting source of electrolytes, potassium in particular. Yes, you're drinking a potassium drink when you're drinking coffee. There's two grams of coffee of potassium, according to uh, the National Food Institute. There's 2.2 grams, or a little over two grams, I should say, of, uh, of potassium per 100 grams of coffee bean. Now, now that's not a cup of coffee. I'm not exactly even sure how much coffee bean is in a cup of coffee. Nonetheless, you can say that drinking coffee is a pretty darn good source of potassium. It's an okay source of calcium. Uh, coffee is a source of magnesium. Coffee is a source of phosphorus. Coffee is a source of iron, absorbable iron, utilizable iron, as well as copper. In general, there's a lot of really interesting minerals that are found in the coffee bean. And, of course, there's those wonderful phytonutrients, plant nutrients, antioxidants, which don't qualify technically as nutrients. And they're not essential nutrients, certainly, and, and you don't even see them listed in nutritional composition uh, uh, schedules or nutritional composition lists of coffee. But it's a rich source of these uh, plant-derived antioxidants, so-called phytonutrients, especially green coffee. Something called chlorogenic acid is found in green coffee. We talked about these polyphenols a few months back, and coffee is a very rich source of polyphenols. Not surprisingly, coffee is great for your skin, applied topically. Coffee masks. You can make your own, save your coffee grounds and make your own coffee mask. You'll get minerals, you'll get nutrients. It won't, it won't be like, you know, you're not going to get great penetration of these things, but it's certainly going to have some benefit applied topically. Plants love coffee grounds, too. The minerals that are found in coffee are great for plants. I know I have a lot of friends who use coffee grounds for their rose bushes. The minerals in, uh, in, the, in the coffee, remember, the minerals have are highly bioavailable. They're plant, essentially, they're plant-derived minerals. They're not just mere minerals. They're plant-derived minerals. Long story short, coffee is pretty good stuff. Now, caffeine, you got to be a little bit careful of. As it turns out, caffeine is actually a learning aid, a nootropic, they say. It's also used for performance athletes. I remember uh, when I was compounding in my compounding pharmacy, when I started compounding in my compounding pharmacy, I had a bicycle racer come to me, and he wanted me to make a caffeine gel for him so he could use, he could take a squirt of it when he was done with it, or at the end of the race, or not the end of the race, but towards the end of the race, so we get a burst of energy. And I puzzled, caffeine tastes awful. Stray caffeine is super bitter, and I spent a lot of time. Finally, I figured out what to do. I made him this really sweet caffeine paste. I just diluted the caffeine in a, in a kind of blend, sweetened blend, a non-sugar-free sweetened blend. Didn't want him to crash. I'm a sugar crash, but it was a sugar-free sweetened blend, and tasted didn't taste great. But it tasted not too shabby, and you definitely got a buzz from it. And this was in the pre. This was before Red Bull, and I actually even this was the early 1990s, and I actually even had the idea of somehow figuring out a way to market it or to drop this, put the stuff in a drink so people could drink it. And I never pursued it. And then out came Red Bull, and that was so much for my idea. Um, but it's still. It, it, 
it made me realize that there's a lot of benefits to energy benefits to uh, caffeine if you did it straight. You can still get, obviously, get energy benefits from, from tea and from coffee and caffeinated drinks. But when you do caffeine straight, oh, my God, do you get a buzz. Caffeine is super stimulating stuff. Uh, you can actually buy straight caffeine powder, and there's a lot of uh, the FDA is looking at uh, making it illegal to buy straight caffeine powder. But you can buy straight caffeine powder right off the internet if you want to make your own stuff. I would suggest you're very careful with it because it will kick your butt, and actually, it can be toxic if you do too much of it. So uh, if you're going to do your if you're going to do uh, a coffee, you know, and a lot of coffee, you may want to consider doing decaf, but Apparently, according to the study, it doesn't even matter if you do decaf or not, at least in terms of the longevity benefits. All right, 844-236-6010. Let me get to one more uh, story, and then we'll get your calls. This is really interesting. Uh, the no poo method. What does that mean? This is a no shampoo, uh, no shampoo range rage that uh, a lot of uh, dermatologists are uh, claiming is something that people want to at least consider. Dr. Nicole Rogers from the assistant, uh, the assistant clinical professor of dermatology at Tulane University said, for the average person with healthy untreated hair, there is no evidence that the simple, oh, actually, I shouldn't say that because she's she says you should be washing your hair. So I mean, let me get, let me get into the story here real quick. Apparently, according to a, a journal, a, a magazine called Metro, there's a story who had a woman with about a woman who'd been washing her hair for with just water for two months. She was so persuaded, she persuaded her friends to do it, and then bloggers started to get the idea. According to this doctor, Dr. Nicole Rogers, she says there's no evidence that shampooing can be problematic for the hair. But guess what? I beg to differ because I make shampoo. And I know the stuff that you put in shampoo is nasty, nasty chemicals. If you stuck your hand in uh, a, a vat of the typical detergent that's used in shampoos and stuck your hand in there for an hour or two hours, you would have a very nasty burn on your hand. And I know good and well that you're not putting it on your hair for two hours or three hours. I'm not saying that. But nonetheless, it's a, uh, detergents and surfactants that they use in shampoos are not nice chemicals. And unless you're working in a coal mine somewhere and your hair has got all kinds of gook on it and, and <laughs> sticky dirt, there's really no need for a lot of shampoo on your hair or any shampoo on your hair. And I have personally been recommending that people avoid shampoo for a long time. In fact, I don't really use shampoo. Secret. I just use water. And uh, I don't really have too much of a problem. Mo Back on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in a moment, and we do have lines open. I just want to finish talking about this uh, whole idea of no shampoo. I'm not a big believer in shampoo because I make shampoo, and I know what's in it. In order to make a shampoo, you got to use some pretty harsh detergents, or even detergents in general. It's not all, not all of them are harsh, and most people don't really have enough dirt in their hair to really need to have a harsh detergent. And I said before we went to break that I don't use shampoo. Every once in a while, I'll use shampoo. For the most part, I'll just use water, or sometimes aloe vera, or sometimes apple cider vinegar, or sometimes make, I'll make my own lemon juice concoction. Uh, but uh, detergents really, they're not great for your hair. They're not great for anything, really. They're not great for your skin either. I mean, you do have, your skin tends to get dirtier than your hair. Uh, so, you know, you got to wash, use some kind of cleanser typically for your skin. But for your hair, uh, you might want to consider just water, maybe say 60 or 70% of the time. And then once a week or twice a week, use shampoo. You definitely don't want to rinse, lather, repeat, like they say on the directions. We call that in, in the world of uh, formulation. We call that down the drain marketing because most of your product goes down the drain when they tell you to rinse, lather, and repeat. So it's bottom line is, is use shampoo less, don't use shampoo a lot. I'm not saying not to use it at all, but the less you use, the better off you are. Most people don't need to be, need to be washing their hair with shampoo all that frequently. All right, 844 is our number. We've got lines open. Let's go to Pennsylvania and say good morning to Joseph. What is up, it, Joseph? Yeah, how are you doing? And, uh, thanks for taking my call. Sure. Uh, before I ask, ask a question, uh, I would like to know uh, about the subject you were just speaking about, the coffee, and why the people that advocate for coffee never talk about the phytic acid and the phytates and mm -hmm. the lectins that are in the bean. I just, it's beyond me. 
Yeah, that's a very good point, actually. If you have, uh, for people who have autoimmune problems or people who have uh, any inflammatory health challenges, the lectins can be a problem for sure. Uh, the phytic acid, you know, phytic acid is kind of a mixed bag. There's actually health benefits to phytic acid. Phytic acid will tie up minerals, as I'm sure you, you're aware of. That's probably what you're alluding to. But phytic acid, because it ties up minerals, also has anti-cancer properties. In fact, phytic acid is also known as IP6. I don't know if you've heard of this term, IP6. And IP6 is getting a lot of play. As being um, as being anti-cancer, I don't know about being chemotherapy, but helping pre prevent cancer. So, uh, and also the chelating properties that phytic acid has may also have benefits for chelating other, uh, just for being a chelating uh, agent for not just for minerals, but a chelating agent for toxins. So it's kind of a mixed bag. But your lectin, the lectins, um, the point you make about lectins is important. But any way you look at it, they do a lot of studies on coffee, and you may probably know this, Joseph. They do lots of studies on coffee. And I'm not sure how much of it is funded by the coffee industry because the coffee industry spends a lot of money on advertising and, and lobbying. But uh, uh, there is tons of literature about published literature about the health benefits of drinking coffee. That's caffeinated and non-caffeinated. Personally, I don't drink coffee, but it's hard to argue with a lot, of the, the, a lot of the studies that come out. And certainly the nutritional value, if you look at the nutritional composition of coffee, there's a case that can be made that yes, coffee well, is the nutritional drink. For expounding on that. Now, the real question is, uh, do you see any epidemiological data on the spectrum of the chlorella, which is the bright green, blue-green algae, and yeah. the spirulina, which uh -huh. is more of the bluish part, the yeah. spectrum between that? They claim that there's the diatoms and crustaceans and sea orchards in there that help out digestion. And But do you the know chlorella? if there's any difference Yeah, between the chlorella, which is yeah. bright green, and the blue-green algae, which is more of the blue spectrum. Is there any difference between them? Well, ha uh, there's big differences. Uh, uh, do you know this technical why something's chlorella, what the difference, uh, f uh, not nutritionally, but in terms of what they are as as entities between chlorella and algae? Well, uh, very, I see it's very interesting. To, yeah, I look, see people that are doing uh, uh, some of the uh, technical data on the that they talk about the amounts of diatoms and no 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 that's not what I'm talking about I'm not talking about the composition I'm talking about oh. what is chlorella what is chlorella and what is spirulina what's the difference between what they are not their composition well I was, ho well, I was hoping that you would expound or elaborate it's really interesting on that. yeah it's really interesting yes, it is. these and these what's are animals between the two I mean, yeah yeah I mean, the that's people People don't, don't know the difference. No, most people don't. But here, here's the difference. There's two. Spirulina is blue-green algae, first of all. So the main distinction is between chlorella and algae. Chlorella and algae are both they're animals, or they're, they're weird animals, both chlorella and algae. Chlorella is a cross between a bacteria and a plant, and algae is a cross between a bacteria and an animal. It's really bizarre entities, these things. And they live on top of the ocean, and they function as the beginning of the food chain in the ocean. All the big, the smaller fish eat the algae, bigger fish eat the smaller fish, bigger fish eat those fish, et cetera, et cetera, to whales. And even whales, by the way, eat these tiny little things, spirulina and chlorella, that live on top of the ocean. Long story short, because they live on top of the ocean, they've got tremendous properties. They have an ability to process solar energy, sun energy. They're living on top of the ocean. Think about it. You know how much sun this top of the ocean gets? Three quarters of the planet is ocean, and, and water absorbs sunlight. Water absorbs solar energy. And the, the chlorella are like a bridge between the two, and they can convert the electrolytes, the salts, and the water, and the sunlight into powerful powerful nutritional compounds. I mean, in the future, we will be eating a lot of algae and chlorella. That algae will be the protein of the future. You know, they're, the, they're looking at using algae as being, a, and it is, an incredibly cheap source of protein, not just ocean algae, they're farming it. They actually have farms in the desert, algae farms in the desert, where they grow algae for their nutritional, uh, unbelievable nutritional value. And they really are. They're complete foods. They have everything you need to live. In algae, you could completely subsist on algae, whether or and chlorella for that matter. So, uh, as far as the differences in nutritional value, the 
chlorophyll in the chlorella, uh, you get way more chlorophyll in the chlorella than you do in the algae. Chlorella actually comes from the word chlorophyll. And the chlorella, or the, sorry, the chlorophyll has got wonderful, wonderful detoxification benefits. That's not to say that regular algae doesn't have chlorophyll or does, won't help you detox. They're both important. I would say that you don't want to necessarily make a distinction between one or the other, but do both if you can. They're cheap enough to do both, and they are both superfoods, uh, most especially uh, for detoxification. I, I shouldn't even say that, most especially, because there's so many, value, so many reasons why these foods are valuable. They're completely packed with every single nutrient you need to live especially hard to find ones. They got wonderful phytonutrients. They're great sources of protein. For vegetarians, they're excellent sources of things like vitamin D and, um, and essential fatty acids like omega-3 fatty acids, which are hard to find. Vegetarians have a hard time and vitamin B12. So they're the ideal food for vegetarians. Now, I, one kind of caveat here, yes, they're packed with nutrients, but the dose that most of us get in the tablets or in the capsules isn't a big enough dose to really give you enough protein, for example, or enough of the bigger nutrients, the ones that you need grams of. So you best don't count on just eating chlorella and spirulina, but certainly, in my opinion, it makes a lot of sense to enhance your diet with, uh, with the powder. I would get the powder rather than the capsules or the tablets and then do a little tiny bit in your... Uh, in your smoothie, put like a quarter teaspoon or so in your smoothie. The, chlor the uh, uh, chlorophyll is very staining, so you got to be a little bit careful. It'll stain your hands. It'll stain your clothes. You don't want to spill it on anything. Uh, it's hard to get off of uh, fabrics, for example. You can get off your counter mostly, but it's hard to get it off of uh, off of fabrics because it stains. But uh, it, it's just an incredibly valuable food. Incredibly, incredibly cheap, abundant, valuable food. Does that help you? Yes, it does, Ben. Thank you very yeah. much. I appreciate yeah. your time. You bet. You bet. It is an ultimate, ultimate green food. And, and as I say, for especially for vegetarians, but for everybody, I personally do a little bit of my smoothie every day. You can actually get, uh, now they have drops that are a little bit easier to work with. Uh, but um, it, the powder is so ridiculously cheap. You can get like uh, a year's supply for $25 or $30 if you do a small amount every day. And it is a wonderful way to enhance your nutritional supplement program because it contains absolutely everything that a human being or that an animal needs to live. And I find it so fascinating that these tiny little entities, these microscopic, literally microscopic, single-celled microorganisms, how can, a, how can you have a single cell that's an animal? That's what a single cell microorganism is, if you've heard that term. It's a cell that is an animal, that has everything a cell, that has all of the qualities of an animal, yet it is microscopic like a cell. This is why it's got everything you need to live, just like an egg. I've always said an egg is, is nature's most powerful food because it's a cell. Well, chlorella is a single cell microorganism. It's also a cell, same with spirulina and algae. They are uh, single cell microorganisms, which means they have everything a cell needs, that is us, because we're made of cells in order for that cell to be healthy and to thrive. All right, eight four. Oh, I'm sorry, that's it. We're out of time. It goes by fast on the bright side. Thanks for listening. 866-735-2470 is the phone number for the uh, Bright Side Ben team. If you want to join the team or order longevity products, and if you want to order any of our True Skin Health products, go to TruthTreatments.com. TruthTreatments.com. Thank you for listening to the Bright Side. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now.